Today's episode of the Star Local Media High School Sports Podcast is brought to you by Poor Richard's Cafe and Star Local Media. Poor Richard's Cafe, Plano's oldest restaurant since 1973. They are open daily from 5.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., serving the three most important meals of the day, breakfast, lunch, and dessert. It is true Texas homestyle cooking made with love and grit at his Poor Richard's Cafe, located off of Avenue K in Plano. Welcome to another episode of the Star Local Media High School Sports Podcast. My name is Matt Welsh, being joined by Devin Hassan, and only Devin Hassan, just, uh, <laughs> just a two-man band for this episode as we uh, as we continue to uh, traipse our way up until the start of uh, high school football season. As we continue to preview uh, district by district, we, uh, we have knocked out all of our 5A districts, so it's time to talk some 6A. And for today's podcast, Devin, I hope you've uh, hope you've got plenty of, uh, plenty of air <laughs> in those lungs because this is going to be a busy one for you as we, uh, as we knock out the, uh, the Devin districts, districts 10, 6A, and 11. 11 6A, the two 6A districts that you cover near and dear as you have for uh, for years with uh, with the Garland ISD district over in 10 6A and then Mesquite ISD, Rockwall, Longview, all those schools out in 11 6A. Um, yeah, man, we're uh, it is wild to think that we have only one more Friday night without high school football in our lives, and then starting next week for the next three and a half months. <laughs> well, we hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's um, all right. So let's start with um, with District 10 6A, and for this podcast, we're going to talk. Um, you know, it is you know since we're still kind of in the uh, you know nearing the preseason phase of the uh, of football season and at this time of the year it is it is eternal optimism season you know every interview that you conduct it's always going to be positive everybody's making strides everybody's right where they need to be and um, you know coaches are psyched with where their players are at the players are excited just to be back in the swing of things fans are jazzed up because the season's almost here so everybody's positive right now. everybody's undefeated yeah yeah <laughs> that's, that's right so we're going to feed off of that and um, basically talk about just basically a uh, a reason to be excited for each of the teams that you uh, that you cover, um, you know, for each of uh, for each of these districts. So um, we're going to start over in 106A, a district that has uh, has long since been lorded over by uh, by Saxe, and that was uh, that was the case last year as Saxe went uh, went undefeated, claimed a uh, how many consecutive district titles is this for them? That's uh, three, three all, all undefeated. Also, they they're, they got a 19 game district winning streak they'll be taking wow. into the end of the season. So yeah, they've been they've kind of ruled the GIST roost here uh, in recent years. So they've yeah. Saxy did Saxy things last year. Then you had Rowlett and Wiley tying for second place in that district, and Naaman Forrest eking in as the last of the four playoff teams. So um, obviously, Saxy and Rowlett are the two teams out of the district that you cover. So we can focus primarily on them. Um, with Saxy, I mean, yeah, let's go. Uh, let's start right at the top. And as far as the uh, the reigning district champions go, um, what is one reason that Saxy fans should be excited about the upcoming season? Uh, you know, I really like their defensive line. Okay. I think that's you know. Some coaches will argue, you know, you win and lose in the trenches. And Saxe's had one of those those deep rotations at defensive line uh, where they play eight or nine guys. Mm -hmm. So whereas normally when you lose a guy like Hunter Spears, uh, you know, he's an all-state caliber player, uh, that's going to hurt. But when the way Saxe has done things here um, and, and recently is, is even though these, they may not have – you know, quote unquote, returning starters. These are guys who have played a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know, and you saw this last year. Uh, Anthony and Ayu yeah. uh, on the defensive line, um, and you know, a kid that didn't even start playing football. Um, until here in the last mm -hmm. year, so he was one of those, you know, those stories you hear about the coaches see a kid walking through, yeah, you know, the, I, I the think school I th or, or dunking a basketball <laughs> in, in PE, and they say, no, you need it, you're you're coming with me, um, and he's a guy that, uh, again, because they had such a deep rotation, didn't, you know, took him a while to break in, but once he did, it was impossible to keep him off the field and keep him from making plays. And I guess in that Plano East game, you saw, uh, you know, had three sacks. Yeah, that's and um, those are always the best stories. Those kids that I think I think the story from Coach Barons was they found him in, like you mentioned, gym class was. Where you, you unearthed this uh, this this diamond in the rough, and yeah, now he was wrecking shop in the playoffs or their defensive line last season. And, and, and you, you can say all you want about these huge offensive numbers that Saxe has been able to put up here in the mm -hmm. last few years um, as they've you know been on their run of success. But it's, it's that defense. It's on the. It's in that defensive line that's really made a big difference when it comes down to district opponents because teams just can't run on them, yeah. and they also can get enough pressure on, on opposing quarterbacks to disrupt. You know, obviously the spread offense is a lot about rhythm and whatnot, and uh, and it's not just him. You know, Ryan Jones. Jones is back. Josh Washington's back. Josh Stafford is back. Mm -hmm. um, they've always had active linebackers. You know, Bryce Robinson's moved on, but um, you know, guys like Jordan Brooks and Quentin Williams. I mean, that front seven is going to be a lot of fun to watch, and, and especially you know, 
because of the way that most teams are running the spread um, and, and whatnot, that front seven is so important. Now they do have some press, you know, some questions in the secondary. They lose Braylon Brooks, who you know, <laughs> and our, our, all those pick sixes, our, 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 <laughs> our star local media defensive player of the oh. year uh, a year ago, as well as Michael Buchanan. Yeah. So um, they, there's they have some inexperience. Um, in that secondary, but they have been able to find playmakers, and certainly when you have a front seven like that, um, it certainly helps ease that transition, especially um, you know early in the season when they have an offense that has a lot of question marks this year. I do have to ask you, though, before we move on to Rowlett, though, just because there was a, uh, a development in the offseason at the running back position that certainly bears mentioning with Miles Nash transferring um, to, what was it, Fort Worth Southwest Christian? Yes. Okay, so obviously, yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, that kind of leaves Saxy with one of the, uh, I'm sure they were banking on quite a bit for Miles Nash heading of this season so what uh, just kind of give me a quick update on just kind of where things are at at the running back position it certainly hurts no doubt yeah. because miles nash was a guy he was going to be their featured running back he was the featured running back last year mm -hmm. um and but he was also a guy that he's played so he's played you know wide receiver as a sophomore he's a starting wide receiver so he's a guy that you can move around uh, just find different ways to get the ball mm -hmm. in his hands i mean he's got he's an explosive playmaker he's got d1 offers um and, and yeah, that said, certainly does change the complexion of that offense because they are breaking in a new quarterback mm -hmm. again this year. You know, Xavier Foreman, Parker Wells each got some experience early last year before they made the full time move to Derrick Rose. Mm -hmm. um, but they're, you know, those guys have been, you know, kind of battling out for the, the starting role. Uh, Sean Coleman is a guy who, who got, he flashed his potential yeah. last year. Um, but and again, he was supposed to, I think, be the complement back now, and all of a sudden he's being, oh, yeah. you know, uh, maybe forced into a, lar a much larger role. But you know, Saxe has always found guys that, that have been successful in their ground game as well, and they're going to need it because, um, again, their their receivers are young. They graduated, I think, their top four receivers from last year. Uh, they do have a good, you know, offensive line with Javon Ellison and Braylon Williams and Ricardo Ochoa. They're all returning starters, mm -hmm. so you know, I, I think they'll be fine. It's just going to take it's going to take some time for them to kind of, you know, I guess, find their identity, uh, similar to last year when that first month was kind of a struggle. Seemed to work out all right though in the end. It did. It did. They, they, <laughs> it seems like the start of district play is always kind of the remedy they need yeah. if things aren't going the way they want. Let's move on to Rowlett, the other uh, the, the fierce rival of those Saxy Mustangs. So, um, so yeah, Rowlett finished second last year. They have been as consistent as it gets, um, you know, in the district in the Metroplex. So, um, yes, what is one thing that uh, Rowlett Eagle fans should look forward to? I, you know, season? they're they're another team that has a lot of questions. I mean, they only have seven returning starters, mm -hmm. but I think that uh, you, you mentioned the consistency. That's that's that legacy that that team every every year they want to carry it on. Uh, they made the playoffs 14 straight years. That's a Garland ISD record, and we think about you know how long Garland was a power sure. in some of those stretches over yeah. history uh, the fact that theirs is the longest uh, streak um, of any GIST team mm -hmm. it's a huge source of pride and that's uh, I mean those kids even you know when they come up through the ranks they don't want to be the team or the group that lets that you know lets that legacy down so you know we'll see what happens Alex route um, he has a full season uh, offseason at quarterback uh, you know didn't, ha didn't have to throw the ball much last year when he did come in uh, when I saw him he did he did did show some uh, some ability with his legs mm -hmm. to when plays broke down to, to do things. Um, we'll see what they do at running back. He does have a pair of, of outstanding wide receivers. Antonio Hull is a two-time All District performer. Mm -hmm. uh, Trayvon King made some nice catches for him next year uh, last season. So you know it's just question marks there. Their defensive line, kind of like Saxe, is going to be their strength. Uh, Jeremiah Franks is is one of the best defensive players that nobody ever talks about but that's probably going to change this year uh, Darius Dunlap uh, Chris Lockett so they they've got some guys up front uh, again there's there's gonna be newcomers in the back but they've also you don't make the playoffs 14 straight seasons without being able to reload yeah. and I expect it will be able to do the same this year so with um you know you're gonna be obviously focusing primarily on those two out of this district as far as you know some of the other GIST programs or or Wiley you know which as I mentioned earlier tied Rowlett for second place in the district is there um is there a dark horse contender among the rest of the district or just kind of what is one team that kind of jumps out as far as the rest of 10 a goes? I think Lakeview. Okay. Um, you know, they've made steady strides under Kendall Miller since he's been there. Um, made the playoffs <laughs> um, a couple of years ago. They've got 12 returning starters back. Uh, one of those being perhaps the best player or certainly the most dynamic player heading into the season mm -hmm. in Kamar Wheaton, uh, ah. the junior running back, uh, rushed for 1,100 yards and 15 touchdowns last year. He's got D1 offers from all over the country. Mm -hmm. uh, just a speedster, you know, he's a track standout. Um, and, and a guy that just, he's just a true difference maker. And I, I 
maybe not the best all-around player, but like I say, going into the year, I think you know you'd be hard pressed to find somebody more dynamic in terms of being able to take over a game. Uh, they also get Jared Adams back at quarterback. Um, he was. He had played as a sophomore some. He was going to be their full-time guy. Got off to a good start last season, but got hurt, and I believe in week two, and missed the rest of the year. So, um, you know, he, he's back, and, and they've got some outstanding uh, guys on defense. Victor Smith uh, on the defensive line, and then, you know, Garnet Garnet Burke, Caleb Ferguson, uh, Ja'Cory Tarver. These are guys that are, you know, are getting college's attention in, in the secondary. So, you know, Lakeview is going to be is going to be interesting. They they've had a hard time cracking that top two, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we'll, we'll see what the, what they can do in terms of being kind of the sleeper pick to maybe unseat Saxe in, in right. that run. So, kind of on a on a similar note, then you know, we uh, one thing that we do every year for uh, for our gridiron preview, which actually comes out on Thursday, um, our all market football tab, which Devin. And myself, Taylor, Brian, uh, Kendrick, even Justin Thomas, you know, RIP. Um, you know, we, just, we poured so many, so much blood, sweat, and tears into getting this thing ready as we previewed every single team, every single district that we cover. It comes out on Thursday. And one of the things for each of our district previews is our games to watch. We pick five games from across the district that are the marquee games to watch. And we always like to bring one of those to the air for the, uh, for the podcast. So um, I have to ask, I mean, it, it feels like the in years past, the default answer to this has been that season finale between Rowlett and Saxe, um, the rivalry renewed. Um, is that the biggest game on the district schedule this year, or is the aforementioned Lakeview? Um, would that be your marquee matchup? Or is there a different one that's completely <laughs> off my radar right now? Yeah, you know, and it, and it seems silly to go against the rowlett Saxe mm -hmm. just because that's the rival game. That, that's their, always their biggest game of the year. It just so happens here recently it's come down to be with district title implications on the line. And on the last um, week of the season. And on the, on the last yeah. week of the season. Um, and, 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 and I'm I think it'll have huge implications once again this year. But yeah, I'm actually going just from a, I guess from an excitement level, I really want to see what happens when Saxe plays Lakeview. That game is October 21st, 24th at Williams Stadium. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going kind of based on last year as well. Uh, this is, Lakeview was up on Saxe 38-28 uh, going to the fourth quarter. And Saxe scored 21 unanswered in the fourth quarter. Lakeview still had a chance to drive down and, and come back late. And then the aforementioned Braylon Brooks had a pick six in that game as well. And that's he'll be one to do. Uh, that that kind of yeah. sealed it. But, you know, I talked about that Saxe front seven and their ability mm -hmm. to, to, to just shut down opposing running games. Well, that could be their biggest test of the year when Kamar Wheaton rolls through there and trying to, trying to force them out of their element. So, um, you know, there's still other big games. Rylett and Lakeview have had some crazy games over the years, and, and, and obviously the the showdown at the end of the season. But I think that's, uh, you know, just kind of jumping out at me. This is a game I really want to see. Okay. And then let's round out the uh, our talk about 10-6A uh, with um, some early playoff predictions. You know, it's obviously incredibly early in the process. We haven't seen a single one of these teams actually play a game yeah. yet. So, but nevertheless, at this point in time, who do you feel like are the four playoff teams out of this district? You know, um... Saxe, certainly. Um, and then in second, I, I'm Rowlett. Okay. I mean, even though I just talked about Lakeview, and <laughs> I, I think they may have a better chance to knock off Saxe, but Rowlett has just, they find a way against Lakeview. They've just had their number. I mean, they've had some crazy games, the 46 to 42 a couple of years oh, yeah. ago, and then the 63 62 overtime game. Uh, but the bottom line was Rowlett won those games, and Lakeview hasn't beaten them since 2003. And so, it, and that's, you know. It, that's a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. I was still in high school back then. Well, and, and <laughs> you know, it, people talk about the Saxe yeah. Rowlett rivalry, and for good reason, mm -hmm. but Rowlett and Lakeview have a rivalry of their own. I mean, Lakeview still calls Rowlett that school across, the, you know, the lake and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and you know, when Rowlett opened, it took a big chunk of Lakeview's kids, mm -hmm. that kids that normally would have gone to Lakeview, and it took Lakeview a few years to kind of recover, get their numbers back up. Um, so again, it's, it's kind of like picking Saxe to win it because, well, you know, you got to beat him. Someone's got to beat oh, him yeah. first. Same thing with Rowlett and Lakeview. Lakeview's got to prove they can beat mm -hmm. Rowlett first. But I certainly think, you know, Rowlett's to Lakeview a close three. Um, any of those three teams, I think, are a cut above. Mm -hmm. You know, Wiley made it last year. But they, you know, Rashad Dixon was such a big part of their For offense, sure. their outstanding quarterback. Uh, Naaman Forrest has a new head coach. Garland and South Garland are just so young, and I don't think they're there yet. Uh, I have Wiley as my fourth team, with North Garland kind of a dark horse to make a move uh, as mm -hmm. well. They have 15 returning starters. They're deeper than they've ever been. Um, and they, they took Wiley down to the wire last year. Wiley had a score with under a minute left to beat North Garland. So I think if that game was earlier in the district season, I'd like North Garland's chances a lot more. Right. But Wiley 
Wiley is just one of those teams under Bill Howard that, you know, you don't want to play them late in the season because that's when they're hitting their stride. So that game being the second to the last week of the season, uh, I think I give Wiley the slide as there to get that fourth spot. Okay, and that is a look at uh, kind of what to expect in the uh, in the coming months from District 10-6A. Devin, we'll give you a chance to catch your breath, yeah. and then we will, uh, on the other side of this break, talk about your other 6A district, 11-6A, and we'll pick that up after a word from the sponsor. Today's podcast is brought to you by Star Local Media. 14 newspapers and websites with a print distribution of 270,000 homes and monthly page views of 600,000 online. Star Local Media, your community voice for news. And now, let's get back to the podcast. We just talked some 10-6A out in Garland, so let's uh, let's move a little bit further east over to 11-6A, Devin, and that is where uh, the 6A, the 3-6A uh, Mesquite ISD schools reside. Mesquite, Horn, and North Mesquite. Um, and let's, uh, yeah, let's see what's in store for those three programs. As a quick uh, recap from last year, this was a district that actually harbored the Class 6A Division II state champion, Longview. They're still in this district. They're still going to be really good. <laughs> um, you had Longview, which won the district last year, went undefeated um, in district play. Um, and did they go undefeated for the season? Yes. yes 16 and 0. 16 and 0. Um, so, yes, Longview, still doing the Longview thing. You had Rockwall, which finished in second place last year, and then you had uh, Mesquite and Horn tying for third place. Um, so, let's start with, um, yeah, let's knock out your, your three Mesquite schools, starting with, I guess, the de facto city champion heading into this year. When's the last time you were able to say that about the, uh, about the Skeeters? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a few years. I yeah, think yeah. 2013 was when they last, uh, last were able to make that claim. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, certainly a, a great. Uh, turnaround for them uh, after going one and nine two years ago. Uh, you know, Jeff Leiner and that staff mm -hmm. got him pointed in the right direction. Uh, they make it back to the playoffs for the first time since 2013. Uh, so a lot of excitement because they see that 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 kind of that learning curve, so to speak, where they you know had a four game turnaround essentially mm -hmm. last year. So they're looking to keep that going. See, you know, uh, they got 12 returning starters. So they, there's pieces in place. Um, so many teams uh, in this area are replacing quarterbacks. Well, did they have a, a returning starter quarterback mm -hmm. in Dylan McGill? Uh, he's a dual threat. He started last year actually sharing uh, snaps, but it didn't take long for him to kind of take over that full time position. Sure. And again, he's a guy that uh, got he made progress throwing the ball, and he always has that ability to to, to make plays with his legs. Uh, they have one of the top running backs in the area, uh, Ladarius Turner, who rushed for 1,200 yards last year. Really tough runner with, but does have that breakaway speed, and he. Yeah, he, he broke some big runs against some quality teams last year but when they did play against Longview and against Rockwall and mm -hmm. whatnot. So, um, you know, two guys on the outside, Jadarian Smith and KB Frazier, um, who, who, who are, you know, are dynamic playmakers out there. R.J. Bonner is a sophomore that they're going to try to incorporate in the offense. Maybe, you know, line up at running back, line up at receiver, just find different ways to, to get him involved. So, you know, I, I think this Mesquite team uh, you know, can certainly continue to make that jump, whether they jump up in this district it remains to be seen because that's a it's, it's a pretty high hurdle to clear when you're trying to get to the to the status of, of a long view or a rock wall um i think the main question for them is they their defensive line was so good last year they had three guys that earned earned scholarships mm -hmm. um so they're gonna have to replace uh, those guys but they've got a couple of uh, really good linebackers and alec rice and Jaden brown and Dwayne adams is kind of leading their secondary so i think they're fine in those places i think the defensive line right now it's probably their main area of focus, but I, I think that offense has, you know, has the ability to to be one of the top, you know, offenses in the area. All right. So then, uh, then we look at a team like Horn, which I mean, I'm sure Horn fans used up all the uh, any all the heart medication that you could find in Mesquite last year with as as up and down a season as, as that was for the Jaguars. It ends on a good note, though, obviously, as they were the furthest uh, playoff advancee of anybody out of uh, out of Mesquite. So let's um yeah, let's talk about the Jaguars, Devin. As far as uh, just uh, staying optimistic and talking about reasons to be excited for the upcoming season, um, how do you convince Horn fans that they won't have to go through the same just Heart aching roller coaster that they that they did last year. I don't know that I can <laughs> uh, just, uh, because because you know you know we, zero and seven to start the season, then they reel off five straight wins, go to the regional semifinals. You know we we talked about it all that all last year. They're not a zero and so and so team. You know a lot of that was a product of their schedule. Yes. It was you know not not only was their non district schedule tough, but their district schedule was front loaded with early games against Longview and Rockwall. Um, 
I don't think they'll be 0 and 7 after this year. Or, I mean, go at, at this point in the season. Because that's uh, the thing. It's the it's, same schedule it's, with the exception of Week One. They play John Tyler instead of Allen, which I mean is it's a drop off, but, but I'll be not a, not, a, not a huge one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's still uh, John Tyler still a very very quality yeah. team. So um, yeah, and, and the fact that they're having to do this, they got a new head coach Chris Hudler, um, who was promoted uh, from defensive coordinator. So he's not a, he's not a new face. He yeah. knows these kids. The kids know him. Uh, he knows the system. But uh, they are going to have to replace. Uh, Jermaine, Jermaine Gibbons a quarterback yeah, and, and, and Horn has kind of had a, a, an embarrassment of riches at quarterback here in the last seven eight years where once they graduate a two or three year starter they have a guy that's already ready just to, to take over that position and, and not miss a beat they don't never they don't necessarily have <coughs> excuse me they don't necessarily have that this year um, they've looked at a couple different guys, so it'll be interesting to see how they approach that. Whoever gets that starting role does have plenty around him. Uh, Nikowski Emery uh, has been uh, just a, a standout for at wide receiver and at running back. Uh, last year, he started a receiver, then moved to running back, and can play both roles. I think he's you know, probably planning on being the featured running back uh, this season because they have others on the outside with Donovan Payne, with Cameron Jackson, with Amari Walker, with Ben Wyatt. These are all guys uh, that they're going to try to spread the ball around um, it's just a matter of finding that quarterback and you know in this day and age it's just a matter of adapting your offense to the skill set we saw it with Saxy last year mm -hmm. they tried four different guys and ended up finding success by moving a wide receiver their best wide receiver yeah. back on you know it, it, because he's got the ball in his hand every place he can make plays with his legs and you don't have to be the prototypical drop back you know sling it all over the field obviously you'd love to have that but if you don't have that on your roster you find ways to adapt so you know you look at a guy like maybe Braylon Monroe who was a transfer in um, that that's just an outstanding athlete that can play several different positions he's gotten looked at quarterback do they go in that direction and just try you know kind of try to I guess change their offense to fit that skill set so these first uh, four weeks especially against the, t the level of competition they're gonna be playing are, are gonna be real interesting to see how that offense develops yeah head coach Chris Hudler the latest in a wholesale turnover at head coach among the three Mesquite ISD 6a football programs within the last couple years Years with Fleener coming on at Mesquite, Coach Hudler being hired at Horn, and now as we turn to talk about North Mesquite as they enter year two of the Tim Cedar era. Uh, Horn was tied, uh, finished tied for sixth place last year in uh, in District 11 6A. So um, as as the Stallions prepare for their second year under Coach Cedar, what is one thing that Stallion fans should be excited about? I mean, I think they just they look across town and they see what Mesquite was able mm -hmm. to do in that second year under the coaching staff, and I, they're hoping for similar things. Yeah. Do they have the depth to do it? I'm not sure yet. Uh, you know, they got to a nice start last year. They won three of their first four games. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, we talked about this top heavy, you know, early schedule for Horn. Well, North Mesquite got it late. And as soon as that schedule toughened up, it was harder to come by. Um, Kamari Thompson, their quarterback, uh, is, is back and he's a dual threat. He's going to be going to the Naval Academy. Um, good leader, um, made progress. He, he showed his potential last year. I think against Tyler Lee, he had 360 total yards and five touchdowns when they beat Tyler Lee early on. Uh, they, they, Running back, they need someone to find a. They need to find a running back, and they need to find others on the outside. Marcus Yao could be that guy. He uh, he caught seven passes all last year, but mm -hmm. four of them went for touchdowns. So he has kind of a, a knack for making plays. Um, you know, I think defensively they'll be they'll be fine with Jalen Delance and Davion Carter at the on the line and Tim Cobb at, at you know linebacker. They've got some young players. They got some talented players. They're just young, and so depth is just so key, especially in this district. And I think that's going to be. The main issue for North Mesquite is just getting back to that those, those numbers because you look even you go out and watch their spring game they didn't have the same numbers that some of these other six eight teams were rolling out there okay. so that's going to be you know I think that's going to be key. long term I think that's going to be, be a big key as far as this year goes you know it's just going to be about you know some of these guys stepping up and, and living up here fulfilling that potential that they've shown mm. obviously we cannot preview District 11 60 without talking about those top two teams <laughs> Longview and Rockwall given the uh, feels like there was a very clear line of demarcation between those two and the rest of the district last year um, sounds like both teams are going to be pretty formidable again this uh, this coming season so uh, yeah, I mean yeah just cursory thoughts on on Longview as the uh, as the reigning 6 D2 state champions begin their title defense. Um, is it kind of is this long used district to lose, or just what's the read on uh, on the Lobos so far? I, I think so because you know we, we just got through talking about depth. 
Longview returns only eight starters, but they ha they were so deep and they ran so many different guys in there last year, people don't expect them to fall off. Now, granted, that helps when one of those returning guys is Haynes King, uh, mm -hmm. their quarterback. Uh, he's committed to Texas A&M, one of the top dual threat uh, prospects in the country. Uh, you know, John King, the head coach, it's his son. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's just been, he's a, he's a phenomenal all-around athlete, uh, you know, too. I mean, I've seen him in track and I've seen him play other sports and he's just, he's just one of those guys that's just good at everything he does. Um, what a life. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Um, and, and then, but you know, it's not just Haynes King though. I mean, you know, Caden Meredith is a, is a good mm -hmm. running back coming back. Uh, Caden Kirby wasn't the man last year at wide receiver, but he, cer he certainly flashed enough potential to, to step in. And then they have just playmakers all over the deep, all over the field on defense. They always do, you know, Sawyer, uh, Sawyer Gorm Welch on the line, Tyshawn Taylor at linebacker. Mm -hmm. It's just, um, yeah, it, it's, they, Longview had so many close calls and so many near misses over the years. I mean, this was their first state title in 81 years. And so, um, yeah, and they certainly did it up out there and, and you know, obviously deservedly so. Yeah. And uh, But they're not ready to let it go. I mean, they, they feel like they had that core in place, mm -hmm. uh, you know, particularly with Haynes King at quarterback, uh, to make another run out of it. Now, does that mean they'll even win this district? Who knows? Who knows? Because Rockwall, a lot of people are picking them as you know a top ten in the team uh, in the state top team. Mm -hmm. um, they're breaking a new quarterback. They really like what they've seen out of Braden Locke, uh, the sophomore, to step in, um, and you know whoever. It's assuming it's him. They have maybe the best player in the state in, in Jackson this Smith. Is a very Jake great Bo case for that. I mean, this is a kid I saw like the second week at the Cotton Bowl prep yeah. showcase, yeah. the second week so you know, as sophomore year, and he already was about the best player on the field. Mm -hmm. And just, you saw him last year, I guess, when they played Oh my Allen, God. And, and he is <laughs> that just... Kid, that kid took the very first play from scrimmage, was an 81-yard touchdown catch where he just, I was like, my jaw was through the press box floor. I was, I, I'd never, I just hadn't seen a player do that to Allen's defense all season, and that was just a, just a taste of what he had in store for them. I mean, there was no one single player and this is an Allen team that played Duncanville. I mean, there was no one player that tortured Allen's defense to the level that Jackson Smith and Jigba did. And, and I think against Longview, I, I can't remember the exact numbers, but it, it was like 13 catches for 230 yards and three touchdowns oh, or yeah. something against a Longview. I mean, what a yeah. very, very good Longview Those defense. Those felt like averages for him last season. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, um, but, you know, they have him. And then, you know, Zach Henry is a bruising running back. Mm -hmm. I mean, people tend to they look at the passing game and, you know, the, that Rodney Webb offense out there, and they kind of forget that Rockwell can also pound the ball oh, yeah. also. So, so um, you know, again, they, they've got some. Their defense is is going to be solid again. Um, they really like what they see out of Alex Orgy. Another, oh, yeah. <laughs> they keep uh, the Orgy family keep yeah. providing <laughs> defensive standouts for them. Um, and again, last year that this game went down to the wire. Longview had to score late to win forty two thirty five. And um, you know, it's 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 so hard to to get to that level. And it's just you know, every like you talk about, every team has high expectations. Every team's undefeated right now. But cracking that top two in 11 6 a is a really For tough sure. task. Yeah, I've seen some uh, some outlets that are speculating that Rockwell could very well be the best team in Region Two out of 6 a uh, yeah. Division One. Which, I mean, yeah, they've... it's it. You know, we'll see how. Anytime you're breaking in a, a new quarterback, especially a sophomore, sure. you don't know. But based on what the, they've seen out of Braden Locke, they have really, really high expectations for him. And he's never going to have a better player to throw the ball to exactly. than he does right now. Just get it somewhere <laughs> in the area, and, and it's no problem. All right, so I'm obviously like we all know the game to watch out of that district is going to be Rockwall and uh, in Longview for sure. But we're not going to talk about that because we're, you know, we're covering Mesquite ISD over here when we talk 11-6A. So as far as the game to watch out of 11-6A pertaining to one of those three Mesquite ISD programs, what do you think it is? Uh, September 27th. Ironically, the same night as Longview and Rockwall, uh -huh. uh, we have Horn, uh, Horn against Mesquite. Mm -hmm. um, this is the district opener. Mm -hmm. And this is the this, the game, I guess last year when it really was kind of became clear that Mesquite had arrived um, and that they were ready to take that next step. You know, they, they enjoy some success in non-district, but you didn't know it against the quality of competition, mm -hmm. you know, the level of competition. But uh, Horn, he kind of ruled the MISD uh, 6A roost for several years. And, um, you know, it, it was back and forth game. You know, Horn scored with about a minute and a half left. And you thought, okay, here's where reality sets in. <laughs> Mesquite 
didn't sit on the ball. They didn't play for overtime. They went right back down the field. Uh, Iron Perez kicks a field goal as time expires for a 20 to 17 victory. And that, again, I think in terms of building confidence, that was the biggest game for Mesquite last oh, yeah. year. And for Horn, it was kind of a shock to the system. They'd had their way with Mesquite, North Mesquite in recent years. Um, they, I think they thought, well, you know, we can shake off this, for sure. this, this you know, slow start against the state rate contenders. But now that we're, you know, it didn't turn out that way. And it, uh, it affected them for another couple of weeks after to that so you know I think I think both these teams you know especially being the distance <coughs> opener being a rivalry game just in terms of, of kind of providing a springboard a, a momentum going forth into the 11 6 a season is going to be big um, you know Horn their linebackers Nick Garcia and Quavon Grant are outstanding they combined for 260 tackles last year so really curious to see them against Ladarius Turner and that um, risky ground game and let's uh, let's close up shop with your four projected playoff teams out of this district. <laughs> well, it's you know Longview, the reigning <laughs> state champion, is um, in Rockwell. Way to go out on a limb, Devin. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no shocking uh, <laughs> pronouncements here, but uh, you know Longview and Rockwall, I, I still have Longview as a favorite just yeah. because there's the, the if Haynes King, but you know Rockwall is, is certainly dangerous. Um, I think the third and fourth spots again come down to Horn and Mesquite, and my game of the week. Um, our game of the year, our game to watch. I think the winner of that game has obviously has the inside track. I think Tyler Lee uh, is a is a team to kind of keep an eye okay. on. They have 15 hmm. returning starters. Um, and so I just Jamarian Miller was a freshman that looked like a senior out there running back last year, mm -hmm. and so he could be one of those breakout guys. But um, I still think that they have a little ways to go. I think Horn and Mesquite are, are at this point are are right there. Uh, whether they can crack the top two, um, we'll, we'll see. You know, they both had some good moments against Rockwell last year, and against Longview for mm -hmm. that matter, or at least Mesquite did. But uh, as of now, I have you know the winner of that game third and the other fourth. Okay, and that will uh, yes, that will conclude this episode of the Star Local Media High School Sports Podcast. We've previewed 10-6A, 11-6A. We've got two more districts to go. One of them comes down on Thursday. <laughs> it's a big one. We're going to try to fit four people around this round table to talk District 9-6A. <laughs> Probably going to be a bit of a long podcast. So, Devin, appreciate you taking the time to swing by and chat about your two districts. Said, we'll be back on Thursday, folks. In the meantime, you enjoy your week, and we will talk to you all later.